Hi! In this video, we're going to introduce you to the Brain Info page and the Kramer web page. When you enter the IP address of the SL hardware into your browser, you can access information relating to the SL hardware. The general info page will come up first, showing you the model's name, firmware version, which is separate from the brain firmware, serial number, and web version. In the menu on the left, if you click Device Settings, you'll see the device name. You'll also see that the time server is set to ON, which is necessary for smooth Kramer control operation. If you do not want to use the NTP site as default, please use a local address for a time server that exists on the local network. When you select Communication from the menu on the left, you'll gain access to the SL hardware's network details. The default networking ports for control of the SL are UDP 50,000 and TCP 5000. Within the Ethernet field, we can set the necessary static IP information for the hardware. The default setting of the SL is DHCP. The serial port settings for the 4 or 8 serial ports can be found by selecting the Serial Port Setting option in the left-hand menu. Here you will see a list of ports along with the standard RS-232 settings for the control ports. This is where you can set the baud rate for your connected devices. Click on each port to review the individual settings. Next, click on GPIO Port Settings in the menu. Within the GPIO option, we can set our trigger type and voltage thresholds. Click on Relay Port Settings in the menu to review the port settings. The GPIO and Relay settings are internal for the ports on the SL hardware. The IR Command Learner, Security, Logs, and About Us pages are pretty self-explanatory, but go ahead and click through the menu system so you are familiar with each page. Let's take a look at the Brain Info page now to review the details about the brain process running on the various types of hardware. You can click Brain Info from the menu on the left to access this page, as long as you are using the latest firmware. Remember to enter the IP address of your SL hardware into a URL to access the system initially. If you are using KC Brainware, you can find the Brain Info page by going to the IP address of the hardware followed by 8000 slash Kramer dash UI slash index dot HTML. Once you have the Brain Info page open, you will see standard information for your brain. This includes the hardware model, firmware version, MAC address, brain ID, space name, and more. The brain state needs to be closely monitored. If you are using Kramer Control with WAN, then we expect to see a green status with active, online, or unprovisioned when we open this page. If you are using Kramer Control without WAN, then we will expect to see an active, offline, or red, unprovisioned status. If you see a yellow or orange status, that means one or more of the controlling devices is not communicating with the brain. If this happens, check the IP address or login details of the controlled equipment within the builder gateways. Beyond the information section, we have additional options to adjust settings and open the control interface of the brain. Click the blue control button halfway down the page and a new browser window will appear showing the previously built GUI for the space. For this page to open and work as expected, the option for Express Mode needs to be enabled within the manager. On the main Brain Info page, if you click on the Diagnostics button, you'll see four other buttons appear with more information on the brain. Log File, Watchdog Log File, Log Monitor, and Test WAN. Let's explore each of these options. Clicking Log File will download a log of the last 2,000 lines of code from the brain. This file will be in your Downloads folder. Watchdog Log will typically be empty. If you click this button and find files in the Watchdog Log, that means there are issues with the programming inside the space or a potential networking issue. If you click Log Monitor, you'll be able to view a live stream of all the data happening on your brain. This can be used to debug device drivers if you are having communication problems with controlled equipment. Clicking the Test WAN button displays ports and host names used by the brain. If your brain is showing an active offline state and it's supposed to be active online, checking this WAN connection may show which ports or host names are failing to connect. Please note that a full list of host names and ports can be found in our knowledge base. Beneath Diagnostics, you'll see a button called Brain Actions. If you click it, you will see the following options for controlling the brain. Clear Cache, Clear Logs, Restart, Sync, and Active Offline. 
Let's take a closer look at each of these options. Clear cache is used to get rid of old data. It's a good idea to clear the cache from time to time, particularly if you're having stability problems with your brain. Clicking Clear Logs removes log files from the hardware. By default, our logs are cleared after every seven days. But if you are having continued stability issues, clearing the logs may help. If you click Restart, you will restart the brain process on the hardware without restarting the hardware as well. Sync forces a sync with the cloud. If you notice an old program on the brain, you can use this option to download the latest available publishing file. Please be aware that this option only works when WAN is available to the brain. The active offline setting is for instances when Kramer Control is installed without WAN. Kramer Control is a cloud-based system, so the brain will always want to be connected to our servers. The brain will constantly check for connectivity unless the option for active offline is enabled. Now, let's take a look at the Brain Watchdog settings. You should see the following options when you click on Brain Watchdog. On, off, check brain down, check crashing repeatedly, check RAM, watch logs for trigger phases, and check log size. These options allow you to disable the watchdog entirely or disable certain checks that the watchdog is monitoring. Below Brain Watchdog, you'll see a button called Unprovisioning. The provisioning or unprovisioning field looks for a code that is generated within the Kramer Control Manager. When you first set up your hardware and you need to load your programming, you will need to provision. This can be done using the Brain Info page. Copy and paste your generated IDs into this field, and your brain will begin the provisioning or unprovisioning process. Below Unprovisioning, you'll find the Upload Publish section. This is where we load our offline publishing files. The offline publishing files are created within the Kramer Control Manager and or Kramer Control Builder. The TAR file will be downloaded to your Downloads folder and then loaded into this section of the Brain Information page. Our last field within the Brain Information page is the SSL section. Within the SSL section, you will see fields to load server and CA certificates if you are using our PWA feature. Now you know how to navigate the Brain Info page and the Kramer web page. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the Brain Info page in Kramer Control.